All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Capsule Corp Long Range Exploration Mod, which is being made by forum user Gabu. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary to build some pretty awesome ships based off of movies, specifically Mission to Mars and The Martian. So let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what this does offer us. Now let's actually grab a Mark 1-3 command pod as some of the parts here today are pretty large and head into our janitor's closet mod filter to uh, just have capsule corp there and let's see how these parts stack up size wise to our sort of standard command pod. Pods. And the first one we have here is the Hermes pod, of course, based off of uh, the Martian. And pop that baby on, and as you can see, it is a pretty beautifully made command pod here. And, well, frankly, gigantic. The front bit is as large as the Mark 1-3. All in all, a very cool thing with a lot of detailing. And uh, if we just pop down here to the bottom and zoom in, there we go, that's a good camera angle. We can open up this cargo bay here. And of course, on the inside, it does have a hatch for Kerbals to come in and out of and does just offer you a nice little place to put some things. Always good to have. Now, as for the stats on this baby, it's uh, quite impressive. It'll hold up to nine Kerbals, but does require a minimum of four to operate. It does, of course, have a built-in data transmitter, docking node, is a lifting surface, has RCS, reaction wheel, typical crew report, 450 electrical charge, and 250 monopropellant, and all in all, it's just gorgeous. I do really like this thing. Let's pop it off though and take a look at the next one we have, which is the Titan II pod, of course, based off of Mission to Mars. And pop that baby right on there. Now, as for its stats, it'll only hold six Kerbals, but minimum of one to operate. Has a data transmitter, docking node, lifting surface, RCS, reaction wheel, crew report, 2,550 electric charge, 720 liquid fuel, 350 monopropellant, and 880 oxidizer and again is a beautiful looking thing now you notice there's some little notches uh in here and that is for an engine we'll be looking at in a moment and we also do have a cargo bay that we can open right there close that back up excellent and of course deployable landing legs as this isn't just a command pod it's a full-on self-contained lander and that is pretty awesome now we're going to keep that on there for those engines that will pop in in a moment but let's hit up the fuel tanks category next where we only have two things but two wonderful things the first one is the uh, gxgc which holds up to 186 thousand xenon gas and i love this thing i've i've always been a sucker for these you know ball liquid fuel tanks etc they're just well actually xenon in this case i guess they're just interesting to me i i like the look of them now by default it starts with zero but you can of course fill it all the way up to max and is just a very nice fuel tank now the next one we have is a liquid fuel oxidizer and mono propellant tank which holds 2160 liquid fuel 400 mono propellant and 2640 oxidizer and is a bit more, I guess, normal with just a sort of typical pill-shaped tanks and some nice support beams. You will notice it has multiple attachment points on it, and that is for, well, it can you can either attach it there and it pops up some extra gantry supports, or right there to fit flush, and of course it works on the other end as well. And I actually really do quite like the look of uh, it with those extra supports there. It looks more interesting to me. Well, there we go for fuel tanks. Let's head to the engine category now where well, the first one we have is the GIE which is a giant ion engine see it says it right there in the description and well it's it's a giant ion engine it's beautiful I love this thing and will produce let's uh, actually get its 
stats up here. A maximum of 3,250 kilonewtons of thrust in vacuum with a max ISP of 5,400. And of course, using electric charge and xenon gas and has a gimbling range of four degrees. All in all, a very cool engine. Now the next one we have is the Titan engine, which if we pop this thing on now, it also has again two different attachment points for if you want that extra support, or you can just put it straight up flush. And it's just a fun engine, and again, I like it more with the uh, additional secondary attachment point. And well, it's just a cool and large engine that'll produce a maximum of 800 kilonewtons of thrust using liquid fuel and oxidizer, max ISP of 750 in vacuum, of course has a built-in alternator, gimbling of 3 degrees, and does have some built-in liquid fuel at 720, monopropellant at 200, and oxidizer at 880. So a very nice and useful engine. Let's pop you off though and take a look at the last engines here, the Titan II pods. Now these are of course the engines that go right on in there and are a deployable engine, basically your uh, landing engines for this thing. And they produce 220 kilonewtons of max thrust in vacuum with a max ISP of 455 using liquid fuel and oxidizer and a gimbling range of four degrees. Very, very cool parts. And let's chuck those off though, and in command and control, we have two things here. One being the Hermes Structural Center session, which is well, basically a giant block of RCS engines with an unmanned command pod on it, which is always helpful. A reaction wheel, SAS 450 on electric charge, and a thousand mono propellant. And as you can see, just you know, a lot of nice uh, RCS engines on the four sides there. We also do have Altair Lander RCS ports, which I kind of think is a leftover thing from one of Gabu's other mods, but hey, it's here too. So there you are, a nice little RCS block that's pretty standard, frankly, but still, hey, there it is. Now next in structural, we have a fair few parts, which is quite fun. The first being the Hermes pod, which is a docking node and also holds 600 mono propellant. Is quite cool. I love all the detailing on this thing, especially with the antennae going out there. But what's more fun is these doors open. So we can open these up. We have the front and sort of back end doors of this thing which you can open and close, and of course have a series of interior lights, which is always handy. We then have the Hermes Structure A, which holds 4,000 electric charge and is basically just a giant battery, but hey, is also a very nice looking structural piece. We then have the Hermes Structure A1, which is a docking node similar to the other one, where we can open up the doors on either end, and it's a nice hollow interior, and of course the lights that we can put on in there. The next one we have is the Hermes Struct B, which is, there we go, very cool looking thing. I really like the more industrial nature to it. And it has built-in reaction wheel and 102,500 electric charge. A lot of battery power on this thing. And a great place to put solar panels on these uh, sort of straight end blocks here. We then also have the Hermes Structural Big A1, which holds 20,000 electric charge, and there we go. We can't uh, open the doors on this thing, but it does have some very nice lights that you can turn on on the exterior. Very cool. Now the next is the Hermes Structural Center Session, which is basically a... Uh, you know, multi-adapter for you to be able to, you know, pop on parts all over the ship. And we have another one here that's more block-like. So there we go, two of those hubs. That's the word I was looking for, hub. So you can build off of these things, very nice. We then in coupling have a single docking port for you to enjoy, there we go, pretty standard. And payload, surprisingly nothing. Same in aerodynamics, ground, thermal, but in electrical we do have an awesome giant solar panel, which will produce, uh, you know, 195 electric charge per second. Not too shabby. And again, it's gigantic. It's beautiful. I love this thing. Next in communication, probably my favorite antenna array that I've ever seen in a mod, and that's the Hermes comm system, which of course is just a giant deployable antenna. 
But we can uh, pop this thing, let's actually put it like that, a little bit more visible. A very cool sort of structural inline bit that does have attachment points on both ends. And you can then just extend these babies out and there you are, you have a massive communication system. I love this thing, I really do. Like I said, I think it's my favorite antenna I've ever seen in a mod, it's beautiful and just looks quite cool. Let's flip it around for a little bit better viewing in the light. There we go. Excellent, very, very cool thing. Now next in science, we have a two different habitation rings. The first one here being of course for the Hermes here. And it's uh, a gigantic habitation ring that will be able to hold eight people. It is an unmanned command pod with curb net access, a reaction wheel, a resource harvester in there for, you know, uses, and electric charge 4,400, and we can deploy it. And it, of course, does spin. We can't see that here in the VAB, but we'll take a look at that here outside in a second. All in all, a cool and gigantic habitation ring. There's a better view of the windows. Lovely. Now we then have the one for the Titan Hab Ring. Again, unmanned command pod holds a crew capacity of eight. Has a built-in docking node, a curb net access, RCS, reaction wheel, resource harvester, and 1,400 electric charge. And this one, ooh, boy, let's uh, zoom out there. You can see the RCS engines. And over here is the windows. It, uh, it says deploy, but it doesn't actually do anything when you deploy it. But when you it do have it technically deployed out in space, you can then have it start to spin. Again, this uh, does spin in here, which is very useful. And then we have nothing in utility. So that is it for all the parts. So let's go take a look at a kind of a monstrosity of a ship that I threw together, kind of slamming both of the sort of Hermes and Titan ship designs into one gigantic thing in orbit, which, I mean, is just fun to show off, you know, what you can sort of do with these parts. And I love them. I always love building gigantic deep space ships, and I love having habitation rings and anything that spins. And again, that beautiful comm array. I really do love that thing. And uh, if we actually do deploy this baby, it takes a bit to open up and surprisingly it doesn't break off these bits I built. When it does clip through it, you'll see in a second. And there goes the clipping. Perfect, perfect. That's good that it doesn't destroy my ship or else I'd be a very unhappy camper. The supports then go out and it's all hooked up now, so we just need to start rotating it. Lovely. Now this one, as I said, eh, we can deploy it and nothing happens, but now that it's deployed, we can rotate and you can see the windows on the interior bit there spinning. I accidentally put it the wrong way. I meant to have actually both of these facing forward, but apparently anyone in these spinning sections is going to have a nice view of the engine. But there we are. I do love having, again, just these gigantic freaking batteries. They look cool and they're extraordinarily useful. The huge Hermes command pod is great, and it does have a good internal view. Sadly, the habitation rings don't have an internal view. I would have loved to have seen that, but oh well, we do have some nice seats in here for all of our different Kerbals. Nice little command positions. Excellent. And yeah, all in all, it's just a gorgeous ship with well ship parts or rather to allow you to build some pretty awesome things in the game let's actually rotate this around i'm kind of spun around for a bit there we go all those rcs engines firing and yeah just a nice mod of a lot of great parts i love the giant fuel tanks i love the massive engine in the back the great giant solar panels it's just a mod full of a lot of great parts. There are few things in this mod that I don't think, you know, I won't use. All of them. All of them I'll use at some point 
for building some crazy vessel. But, uh, yeah, that's really it for this mod. It's fun, it's useful. If you'd like to check it out for yourself, which I would definitely recommend you go do at some point, you can have a look at the link in the description, as per usual. But that is gonna be it for this episode today. I hope you have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next win. Hopefully, we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, now have a good one!